First thing I want to do is, and I appreciate Mick doing what he did, because we wouldn't be sitting here, and, and I want to reiterate the fact that Mike and Fred Tribble, we got to thank them again for doing what they did, sitting there having that discussion and consciously going out and, and violating, because I'm still a violator. So I've had, I've had real diverse background. I used to wear a badge as a Cliff Warden. I used to sit at the head of the table as the tribal chairman of the Red Cliff Tribe. I sat in as a Voight representative. I've uh, harvested many things. The thing is, 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 is all the knowledge that sat up here and, and all the, the, the things that were done, I can remember the things that, that I was involved with and, and how they got to where they're at. And again, it goes back to remembering who we are, Anishinaabe. Remembering about a Sema. Remembering to acknowledge and, and ask our ancestors what we should do. And as we sat in a room and they were willing to, to negotiate with the state of Minnesota, they were going to negotiate with the state of Minnesota. I stopped everything, asked people to leave the room, and the Shinabes were in that room. How many of you here have asked your relatives what we should do? Nobody can raise their hand. When we finally asked over in Lac de Flambeau, Waspaganay, we asked and we had that ceremony there, the Jizuke, the Sheikh Intent, that came. And it was tough to ask that question. And there's people that were in this room that were at that ceremony. And they said, no, you gotta, you got to fight. You need to stand up. You need to take care of what you need to take care of. And they went to the Supreme Court. And when you're standing on the, on the, on the going in for the arguments, they're all walking down there. And they had that drum there at, in front of the Supreme Court. It was like thunder. When you stood next to that drum, it was so powerful what was coming. It's unbelievable. And the end result is 5-4 decision. But that's because we, we, we asked what we should do. We asked what we should do. So when you tell a story, you need to include the entire story. You can all recall back when, when the treaties were, were first started, we start harvesting. Man, I can remember that guy that's over here and Dave Obi coming over wanting to buy it and wanted to rent and wanted to lease and wanted to do everything and, and Tommy and all them wanted us to, to give up. We wanted to lease the gate. Me and Marvin before went around to every community, every tribe, and we gave a same while we gave tobacco to the leaders. And we gave tobacco to the spiritual people in those communities. And we came to rent to my mother's house. And we sat in that room, and I got the education about treaties right then and there, about four or five hours, when all those people talked about what it was. And what I learned is that those treaties were, were, were a vision of our ancestors. It was our existence. And it's not big. I've been so blessed. to have learned of the things we need to do. And we can't forget that. And we sit here and we talk about all the things we need to remember. We need to remember our elders. It's hard to talk because I think about the people that talk to me what I know. My dad, Sammy Delago, my uncle, my daughter, those are men. They didn't wear feathers in their hair. They didn't smoke pipes. But they were Shinabe every day. They lived their lives Shinabe. And that's our responsibility. And the impact is harvest. Because we need to teach our children. And we need to teach our people to remember where we are from and who we are. Because those treaties, those papers, they ain't paper, that's us. That's our life. Because you set everything aside 
when you set everything aside, we can survive.